We are literally so close to 600,000 subscribers, so stop what you're doing, press the subscribe button, and give this video a big ol' like. Hey guys, what is up, what's going on? It's your girl Ashley and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, what I'm going to be doing is sitting down and filming one of my all time favorite videos to film my channel. It's gonna be like a first impressions, but it's not gonna be a full face because I'm not gonna be testing out any new foundations, powders or concealers. I'm gonna keep it classic. I'm gonna throw it back to some of my all time favorites. So I'm hoping that you guys enjoy this video. I have some products from MAC, Violet Voss, Dominique Cosmetics, so many different things to share with you guys in this video. So I'm really hoping that you guys enjoy it. And if you guys wanna see me grow, this channel grow to its full potential, then make sure you guys subscribe, give the video a like, and click that bell so that you guys are notified anytime I upload a new video, which is three times a week, every single week. I upload every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and y'all don't want to miss out on the fun. So sit back, relax. Y'all already know it's going to be a long one, so without further ado, let's go ahead and hop straight into it. So first things first, my brows are done, but my lids are not primed because I am going to try out a new eyeshadow primer. This isn't technically new, but it's new for me. I did pick up the Morphe Eyelid Primer when I picked up the James Charles Palette. Now, I'm not going to be using the James Palette in this video because I do want to do something a little bit different with that specific palette but when I was watching James's video he said that a concealer isn't going to work as a base to blend the shadows on top of which I found to be very very strange but you know what I really wanted to follow along and apply the makeup in a way that was going to perform the best so he did recommend the Morphe eyelid primer like I said I won't be using that palette in today's video I will be using the brand new Dominique Cosmetics berries and cream eyeshadow shadow palette she did send this over to me so big shout out to Kristen for always looking out and sending over her new launches so again I'm just taking the primer and I'm patting it over top of my lid to act as a really nice base now I have heard that this primer is more like a dry base something very comparable to a MAC paint pot or something like that so I'm very interested to see how the shadows will blend on top of this so I'm going to do something a little bit different with my shadow today I really want to create more of a curved eye look like this but instead of going in with shadow and trying to just like freehand the shape of the eyeshadow I'm going to use a nude eyeliner this one is by Rimmel and I'm just going to do a light rough sketch so I'm just going to simply just trace where I want the shadow to stop not stop more so I'm just sketching out the shape of the eyeshadow so that way it's even on both sides so as you can see right here, this is essentially the eye shape I'm going for. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing on this side so that way both sides are completely even. A few moments later. Perfect, so now that I have the guide carved out on my eye, I'm gonna start going in with eyeshadow. Now, one thing I wanna make sure I do is blend my transitional color right above the line I created, just so that way it kind of peeks out a little bit, but I don't wanna blend it too high. So I am gonna take a brush like this, which is essentially a Morphe M433, and I'm gonna pick the shade called Soft and Sweet from the Berries and Cream eyeshadow palette. And I'm just going to start gently buffing the color in the crease and a little bit above that guideline. And I am really just going to take my time with this. I'm really going to start off with a little bit of color at a time and then I will work my way up and build up that intensity. But for now, like I said, I'm starting out with a little bit of product because this is essentially gonna be my transitional color. Now, one of the biggest recommendations I can give you guys when creating this eye shape is to definitely lay down a guide, but use a pencil that doesn't completely dry down. So as you guys saw, I did use this one by Rimmel. I definitely wouldn't recommend it because the thing about the Rimmel pencil is that once it sets, it sets and it's not going to blend out. So I would definitely use something like a NYX Jumbo White Eye Pencil or something like that, that you could easily just blend shadow directly over top of, and it kind of just blends itself out just because you can kind of see the nude liner underneath the shadow but I will work on covering it up completely when I go in with my other shadows but I do just want you guys to be very mindful of that. What I'm doing now is I'm switching over to an M514 which is more of a smaller blending brush and I'm really working on blending out this eyeshadow just so that way it's nice soft and diffused. Again you really don't want to blend this up too too high. You want to keep it nice and low so I'm really just diffusing out the edges just so that way they're not as harsh. 
I'm now gonna pick up an M507 and I'm gonna use a shade called Bittersweet and I'm just going to again place this in my crease but I'm not going to blend it above the shade called Soft and Sweet. I'm really just placing this directly underneath that shade to give this look a little bit more dimension. I will say that these shadows are so softly packed. They are beautiful and they're blending out very nice. Like I'm super impressed. You go Kristen. You go girl. If you guys get any brushes from Morphe, get this one because it literally allows you to do so much and it gives you so much control over where you're actually placing a color. It's like a cross mix between a blending brush and a pencil brush. It's perfect. I'm just going to go right back in to soft and sweet and just kind of touch it up a little bit because you don't want to completely cover the shade up. You really want it to just peek right underneath that purple we just applied. And this is just going to give you a better blend with your eyeshadow. The next shade I'm going to pick up is called Cherry Juice. And and I'm gonna start right here towards the very outer V and I'm just going to pack this color on. Kind of just stamping it. I'm gonna take it into the crease a little bit, but again, nothing too, too crazy. I'm gonna switch brushes just so that way I can kind of fill in this area right here. Don't worry about messing up right here because we can definitely clean that up with a makeup wipe, which is essentially why I'm doing my eyeshadow before foundation because it's super easy cleanup this way. So don't be alarmed. It's gonna look a little, little crazy, but but it all comes together at the very end. So once I have the shade called Cherry Juice right here on the very outer V, I'm gonna take that M507 and I'm just gonna bring it right here into the inner part of the crease. I'm not blending it on the lid or anything. And this is really just going to carve out the very inner part of my eyelid. So right now, this is currently what I'm working with. I'm gonna go in with a clean M441. I'm gonna dip into Soft and Sweet just a little bit. And I'm just, again, gonna run it right along side the edge to further blend but again don't blend it too too high you really just want to just soften up these edges just so that way it's not as harsh this look definitely calls for a little cut crease action so I'm going to take a little bit of concealer on an ABH A2 brush to cut my crease fun fact this has actually become one of my favorite brushes to cut my crease with it literally is the perfect brush for that so I'm just going to stamp the concealer exactly where I want to carve out a little bit of lid space. Then I'm just going to continue to pat the concealer all over until it's nice and even. You want to make sure that the concealer is just laying nice and flat and it's even all the way throughout. I also like to really just tap down on the concealer until it is like tacky and not so much wet because I feel like the shadows lay better on top of it when it's just a little bit tacky. Before actually getting into my lid shade, I'm actually going to do my brow bone highlight. I'm going to use the shade called In Light from the original Jaclyn Hill palette. You guys know how much I have been loving that shade to highlight my brow bone. So I'm going to take a little bit and pop it right here. And I do want this shade to be most intense at the highest arch of my brow. And then whatever's left over on my brush, I'm just going to go ahead and pat it and wiggle my brush side to side to really help this shade blend in with my transitional color. Now I always like to call my brow bone highlight my magic eraser because I really do feel like it helps out with the overall blending process. Like it really saves the day for me sometimes when I go way too high with my shadow. The next shade I'm going to pick up in the palette is called Cranberry and I'm just going to take my flat brush and just pat it directly over top of the concealer. Then I'm going to pick up the shade called Cherry Juice and again I'm just going to buff this inward so that way it blends in with the shimmer a little bit better. I can definitely say that the shimmers in this palette are a lot more softly packed than her other shadows. I'm not entirely sure if it's the same formula because honestly the shadows just feel so creamy, smooth, and buttery and they're blending so, so, so nicely onto the lid. So big kudos to that. I'm just going to continue taking a little bit of this dark shade and buffing it inwards just so that way that shimmer looks nice and tight. I'm going to go even further with this and I'm going to pick up the shade called Sugar Cookie. 
Kiki, which is a really beautiful soft pink shade. And I'm gonna pop it right here to give it a completely different look. And I do want you guys to be aware that while the colors are blending very, very nicely, I am getting quite a bit of fallout, but nothing too, too crazy. I'm actually gonna go in with a little bit more sugar cookie, spritz my brush with a little bit of Fix Plus. The first time I went in with the shade, I put it on completely dry. So I really want to see how it lays on the lid wet. As you can see, it's a lot more vibrant. What I love is that when I use Fix Plus, it really adheres the product to the lid because it does have glycerin in it. So glycerin is really just going to allow the shadows to stick. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of the shade called Cranberry and make sure that my crease is nice and sharp. And the brush I'm using to do that is an ABH3 brush. Then I'm gonna take a pencil brush and just kind of blend the cranberry shade in with that very pretty light shade called Sugar Cookie. Just because I do want a nice looking blend to this. I definitely have to amp up the look with a little bit of the shade called Blackberry, which is in fact a black shade. I am taking it on an M507 and I'm just feathering it right here on the very outer edge of the eyelid. Now, if you don't want to deepen up this look like this, definitely skip this step. I'm just trying to get the most out of the palette and create something completely different than what I normally create on my channel. Okay, so things are looking pretty decent. I'm actually going to do a little bit of cleanup with a Q-tip and also clean up this edge right here just so that way I can kind of see the vision because right now it looks a little messy and I'm just kind of like... I don't know. Like that's just how I get sometimes when things look messy, I feel messy and I can't see the vision. So I definitely recommend going in with a makeup wipe, makeup remover, and just cleaning up this area before moving on. I'm gonna pick up the shade called Honey Dipped, spray my brush with a little bit of Fix Plus, and I'm just going to actually place it right in the very center of that lighter shade just because I feel like it kind of took a turn when I added sugar cookie in the middle and I want to add a little bit more gold instead. So I definitely feel like this is looking a lot better than just sugar cookie in the very center. I want to try out this MAC Dazzle Liner. This came in the MAC Shiny Pretty Things Holiday Collection, and this one is in the shade Holiday Time. It is just a glitter liner, so I'm just going to do a few streaks directly over top to make it a little bit more festive and add a little shimmer shimmer to the look. You guys, I'm like living for this look. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take even more of the glitter liner and I'm gonna kind of feather it inwards a little bit more, just so that way it kind of looks like it's gradiating from the inner corner. You know what, I've been working on the eyes for a hot minute now, so I definitely want to move on because sometimes when I touch my eyes way too much when doing my makeup, they tend to get very watery in the process. So we're gonna take a break before anything happens like that before it starts going downhill. So I have a new face primer that I want to try and test out. This is the Zero Shine Prime Face Primer by Pop Beauty. It is essentially a mattifying face primer, which is something I don't typically gravitate towards, but I think that this is going to work out very, very well. So I'm gonna take a little bit of it on the back of my hand. It does appear to be a fairly thick primer, which is very surprising, very, very mousse-like. And I'm just going to put this all over. Oh, wow. Yeah, it is pretty thick. As you can see, I probably put way too much, but you know what? My makeup is gonna be locked and loaded and it's not gonna go anywhere all day long. Okay, so things are nice and primed on the skin. It's also very, very tacky to touch, which is great because anytime you wanna think of something tacky, you wanna think of like a glue-like consistency. So when I lay my foundation directly over top of this, the foundation is really going to adhere to the primer and stick to the skin. I will say that while it is mattifying, my face looks very, very luminous. It looks a little glowy. It doesn't feel greasy, but it kind of looks greasy if that makes any sense a few moments later and i will say now the primer doesn't look as greasy as it did when i first applied it which is great i'm gonna go in with a little bit of the pixie color correcting concealer and i'm just going to put this right here underneath my eyes to cancel out any blues and greens this is really really great if you have dark circles or anything like that i also like to apply this concealer on my upper lip because i've struggled with mustache all my life i also like to put this concealer down the sides of my mouth just because i do feel like 
to have a little bit of darkness there and it makes all the difference when I'm editing my photos. It's not as dark in this region right here. So if you couldn't tell, I did self tan over the weekend because I went on a trip with Mac and I wanted to be bronzy and tan because someone once told me when you're tan, you look like a lot slimmer. So I knew we were gonna be taking tons of photos. So I really want it to be nice and bronze. So I did have to change colors in the NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop foundation. This one right here is in the shade Neutral Buff and I do feel like this is gonna be a relatively good match for my neck. I'm gonna spritz my Equal Tool sponge with a little bit of MAC Fix Plus. This is something I always like to do whenever I put on my foundation. And I'm just going to apply this all over. And as you can see, it is too dark for my actual face, but it's going to blend in very nicely with my neck. Honestly, if you guys haven't tried the NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop foundation, I highly recommend. Like, it is bomb. It is bay all freaking day. It gives me so much coverage, but it just, I don't know. I don't even know how to explain it. Like, if you are a full coverage kind of girl, if you live in Florida and you have a hard time with, like, your foundation lasting throughout the day, girl, get this because it does not go anywhere. All right, you guys. So, my skin is nice. It's tan. We are ready. We are rocking and we're rolling. I'm now going to go ahead and apply a little bit of the Flower Beauty Light Illusion Concealer. Now this is still in the shade of light. I feel like it is going to lighten up my face a little bit because right now I'm looking mighty, mighty dark. So I need to tone it down a little bit. I'm gonna also take a little bit down the center of my face to really just help balance everything out. So now that my base is done, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of the number seven Perfect Light Loose Powder, which is a powder that I have really been loving as of recently. And I'm going to set all the areas of my face where I apply that concealer so I'm gonna take it and pop it in the very center and I really like to powder down my foundations sometimes I'll even go in with a loose translucent powder all over my face and then I'll go in with the pressed powder because I feel like they really just last a lot longer than when you just apply a pressed powder and that's just based on experience I do live in Florida so it is extremely hot and humid so a girl's got to do what a girl's got to do you know okay cool so now that I have that powder all over the face I am gonna go in with the pressed powder you guys know how much I I love the Milani Conceal Imperfect Shine Proof Powder. I do wear the shade 04 Natural. I'm gonna take it on a 618 brush by Koki and I'm gonna press this powder into the skin. I like to start off in pressing motions and then when my entire face is pressed down, I will just go in in big circular motions. This is going to just wipe away a lot of that pressed powder we applied before. But first I like to go in and just press and then I'll go in in big circular motions and blend. We're gonna do a little bit of contouring and highlighting. So I will be using this palette right here by MAC. This is the Studio Fix Sculpt and Shape Contour Palette. I'm gonna pick up the shade called Emphasize on an ABH A22, and I'm gonna sweep this directly underneath my eyes. Now, one of the main reasons I did not apply my mascara and lashes as of yet is because sometimes when I go in with my loose powder, it'll kind of get all over my lashes. So that's why they look a little powdery right now. But don't worry, once I'm finished with all of the powders and Stuff like that I will go back in and do my mascara and apply falsies but I'm just taking that emphasized powder directly underneath my eyes to draw forth light as you can see it just gives you a very nice luminous effect which I love so I'm gonna take that underneath the eyes I'm also gonna take some on the chin down the center of my nose and forehead and what I love about this powder is that it is extremely fine so it's not gonna look like chunky glitter or anything like that on the skin I'm now gonna go in with the shade called sculpt and I'm going to just bronze up the skin a little bit. And of course, you can't forget to take a little bit of this bronzer along the sides of the nose to just add a little bit of definition. And anytime I go in and contour my nose, I always like to go in with a little bit of powder alongside the sides to really just sculpt it out and give it a better blend because the last thing you want is for it to look like a harsh, dark line. So I like to just take some down the center and alongside the sides. Oh, I have to take a little bit of this powder right underneath my bronzer, like so. Tis the season to be jolly. La 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 la. While I let that bake there, I am gonna move on to 
highlight and I'm really excited because I will be using this by MAC. This is one of their extra dimension skin finish from their brand new shiny pretty things holiday collection. This one right here is in the shade snow flesh and I felt like it was going to go perfect like literally perfect with this look. So I'm going to use an ABH. What is this? A23 to highlight. Ooh, that highlight though. So this definitely isn't like your typical like light champagne highlight or your light gold highlight. It definitely gives off a completely different like shift in effect, but I'm about it. Like I tried it when I was in Orlando with Mac and I fell in love with the way it looked. So that's what we're rocking with today. I'm gonna wipe off the bake just so that way I can move on to blush and finish off the rest of my eyes. To add a slight flush of color to the cheeks, I will be using this by Milani. This is a baked blush in the shade Rose Dioro. We love a good blush moment. At least I do. Now that my base is done, I'm gonna move back to the Berries and Cream eyeshadow palette. I'm gonna pick up the shade called Blueberry Muffin and I'm just going to press this alongside my lower lash line. I've been itching to use this blue since I opened the palette and I felt like it would look super pretty on the very lower lash line. I'm also gonna bring a little bit of that blue up on the upper lid just so that way it makes more sense and it's not just like blue on the lower lash line. So I'm just going to create kind of like a faux wing with the blue eyeshadow. Picking up a little bit of bittersweet, I'm just gonna blend this directly underneath the blue, just so that way it has a little bit more of a gradient to it. Right now it's just like blue. So I wanna add some contrast and just add a little bit of that light purple to the mix to give it a different effect. To tight line, I'm gonna use the Collab Bold Face Liner and I'm gonna put this on the very lower lash line and also the upper lash line as well. Well, not the upper lash line, my upper tight line. I'm now gonna go ahead and just apply some mascara. This one's by MAC. I have no idea what the name of this mascara is, but I'll be sure to have it listed on the screen. And I'm just gonna coat my lashes, my upper and lower lashes before going in with falsies. So as you guys can see, I did pop on a lash. I feel like it really just sets the look off. I did use these by Kiss. These are the triple push-up lashes from the Lash Couture collection. Um, moving on, I do kind of feel like I want to go over my highlight with a brighter kind of champagne gold. This one is by Dior. This is the Dior Skin Nude Air Luminizer. It's one of my all-time favorites. I don't know what it is. I just feel like this look calls for a bright highlight. Like the Snow Flush one is beautiful. I just don't feel like it's for me with this eye look so just gotta you know put on my Dior highlight because ooh, she is stunning on another level honey so I had to you know bust it out today for this look because it was necessary all right so that's looking a lot better like a million times better I'm not gonna move on to the lips I have two different lip colors right here by Dominique Cosmetics these are the berries and cream liquid lipsticks this is our first time ever coming out with liquid lipsticks so I'm very curious to see how these are gonna look now now, I was gonna do an ombre lip, but I feel like with this look, like this entire look, that's gonna be a little much. So I'm gonna do them swatch on the back of my hand just so that way you guys can see what each shade looks like. This one right here is the darker one, and this one is called Plum Berry. So that is beautiful. I might even go with that one. I feel like I never really go with like dark lips. And then we have this one, which is called Creamy Pink. And I'm leaning a little bit more towards this one, but it may be a little bit too pink for me or I can mix them together to get a custom shade. This right here is what both shades look like mixed together. Honestly, I think I may just go for the dark one. I may just go all out, ball out, why not, right? So yeah, let's go in with Plumberry. All right, you guys, so this is the final and completed look. As you can see, I definitely switched out my lip color just because I felt like it was a little bit much. It was like drama on the eyes, drama on the lips, the whole shebang, and I wasn't really into it. Not to say that I think her liquid lipsticks are bad. I do like the formula. They are a tad bit drying on the lips. I ended up switching my lip color out to my Collab Matte Addiction Liquid Lipstick in the shade I'm Nude here, which is my custom shade that I created alongside Collab Makeup. Now, this isn't available online 
online as of yet, but you can purchase it in all Sally beauty stores in the US and Canada. So check it out if you guys haven't already. Literally the perfect mauve pink nude and I'm in it to win it. So let me know how you guys feel about this completed look down below in the comments. Also, if you guys still have not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Make sure you guys press that subscribe button. Also, click the bell so you guys are notified anytime I upload a new video. And if you guys want to see me grow, like my channel grow, all you have to do is like my videos, share my videos, tell your friends, your mama, your sister, your papa, your uncle, your cousin, your cousin's cousins. Tell everyone, okay? I love you. Thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, I'll be sure to catch you guys all on the next one. Deuces. Oh! Ooh. It's time for bed. <laughs>